SEP Fanfic Readings presents Five Days by Ravy Snake. Chapter 3 Day 1 Night. I can't hold it any more, Draco said. Hermione startled out of the uneasy rest she'd fallen into after their hours long trivia session and looked at him. What? she asked sleepily. I can't hold it any more, he said urgently. Fuck, I waited too long. Hurry! Hermione blinked to attention and gawked at him. "'What do you—' "'Hurry!' he repeated desperately. "'I don't want to piss myself.' "'You—you you actually want me to help you go?' she asked hesitantly. "'As in—' Draco's face was screwed up in pain. "'Yes, goddammit, now, right now!' Spurred on by his frantic tone, Hermione quickly felt around for the zipper of his trousers. "'Shite, you have like two seconds!' Draco warned right as she tugged the zipper open. She bit her lip and turned an uncomfortable expression to the wall as she slipped her fingers into his pants and gently grasped his penis. Drago sucked in a breath at the touch, but said nothing as Hermione rather deftly pulled him free and then held him slightly downward. "'Go,' she instructed, and Drago bowed his head and let out a moan of relief as he finally emptied his bladder into the blackness beneath them. "'Are you done?' Hermione asked awkwardly a minute later. Drago bobbed his still-bowed head up and down in a nod. Yeah, he said in a hoarse whisper. Hermione slightly shook him and then tucked him back into his pants and carefully re-zipped his trousers. Draco made a snorting noise and he shook his head as he lifted it. Leave it to you, Granger, he said, to even be a know-it-all when it comes to how men put themselves away after a leak. Hermione looked uncomfortable again. I only put it back where it belonged. You shook it off first, Draco said. What bloody book told you to do that? "'I lived outdoors with two men for the better part of a year, Malfoy,' she said somewhat defensively. "'There isn't much about the functions of the male body that I don't know about.' Draco made a face. "'Weasley always was rather crude.' Hermione simply frowned at him before tilting her head away from him to stare at the wall. "'How are they, anyway?' Draco asked after a minute of tense silence. "'Weasel and Porter. Still off saving the world, by the sound of it.' "'Why do you care?' Hermione replied tersely. Draco shrugged and rested his head back. I suppose I don't. Hermione glared at the wall for several more minutes till she finally, quietly said, Chinny's pregnant. Gabrielle wants Ron to move to France. Draco looked surprised by her sudden disclosure. Weasley's pregnant. They haven't announced it yet, Hermione nodded lightly. Only Ron and I know, and that's only because... She choked up and closed her eyes. Draco shook his torso against hers. Granger. Hermione suddenly burst into tears. He... Harry asked us to be the godparents. She blubbered miserably, trying to hide her face to the side. Instead, now, I get to spend an eternity stuck in a hole. Draco frowned at her. So much for not getting bothered, he said. She shot him a watery glare that ended up looking squinty as she tried to see him through the rapidly increasing darkness of the approaching night. Fuck you! She snapped at him. Draco simply stared at her. "'Your hand's in the right place whenever you're ready, Granger,' he said flatly. Hermione's lip pulled up in disgust. "'Pig!' she muttered, looking away from him again. "'Oh, get over yourself,' Draco said. Hermione glowered disapprovingly as she turned her face back to him. "'You know what? Ah! What the hell was that?' She jerked her head to the side, her retort instantly forgotten, when something suddenly flew past them. Draco blinked up furiously to the dusk darkening the sky above to try and see what had come up from the abyss below. I... I think that was a bat, he said. If it had been lighter, he would have seen the blood drain from Hermione's face. A bat? she whispered fearfully, leaning her head even further away from where the thing had come up. Another bat flapped just past them then, and she shrieked. This must be an opening to a bat cave. Draco cringed as several more black blurs brushed by his bad arm. Cave? Hermione whimpered. But bats live in colonies of thousands. No sooner had the words left her lips than a steady torrent of wings unleashed around them in the tight cavern as the bats rose toward the freedom of the skies. Hermione's screams joined the shrill, screechy chirping of the innumerable flying mammals as she and Draco instinctively shut their eyes and bowed their heads together. Bats upon bats upon bats flew in seemingly endless swirls around them. 
Several minutes passed, and Hermione's screams had ebbed into sobs as she pressed her face into Draco's neck. Draco had his face pressed equally hard against hers as he grimaced. "'Fucking stop already!' Draco yelled desperately as the bats continued assaulting them. "'Fuck!' It was another half hour before the last stragglers made their way out. Neither Hermione nor Draco dared lifting their heads as they trembled against each other. "'How long until they come back?' Draco mumbled into her shoulder. "'I... I don't... no,' Hermione sniffed miserably. "'Calm down,' Draco said softly. Hermione's breath stuttered with the leftover spasms of her sobbing, but she nodded against him as she willed herself to calm. When she was finally quiet a few minutes later, Draco tentatively blinked open his eyes. "'Whoa,' he breathed out. "'What?' Hermione asked anxiously. "'It's so dark.' he answered, as he stared around them at the total darkness that had fallen. Hermione opened her eyes and quickly closed them again with a whimper. So dark, Draco repeated in awe at the absolute blackness. And cold, Hermione added, shivering against the hard body pressed in with her. Draco groaned. This just keeps getting better and better. And it's only day one, Hermione whispered grimly. Draco nestled his cheek more comfortably on her shoulder. "'We'll only have to worry about day one if it gets much colder,' he said. "'As deep as we are, I doubt the temperatures fluctuated much, actually,' Hermione replied. Draco rolled his eyes in the dark. "'Do tell, all-knowing one,' he drawled snidely, "'just how much you know about ground temperatures.' It was Hermione's turn to roll her eyes. "'Temperatures remain fairly constant on the ground.' "'until you really start getting closer to the core, of course. "'It could be snowing or sweltering up topside, "'and it would still be the same temperature in here.' "'Which is?' Draco inquired impatiently. "'I'm your personal thermometer now,' she spit back. "'I don't know exactly.' "'He practically growled. "'Merlin, is everything so fucking difficult with you? "'Is it cold enough for us to get hypothermia or not? "'Cause it certainly feels like it is.' "'Hermione audibly harumphed. I don't know. Maybe? We've gone the better part of a day so far without going into shock, so... Well, either way, it's terribly uncomfortable, he groused. Are we just going to shrug and hope we don't freeze to death? Hermione thought for a moment. We... we could try warming charms, I suppose, she said quietly. I think they'd be enough to get us through the night more comfortably, at least. Draco sniffed. Warming charms. Done with the ones we have no access to. It's a simple enough spell, Hermione went on, and I once read that the strength of one of the spells can be intensified if done in tandem between two or more witches and wizards. Draco was quiet as he considered the idea. I've never tried casting a warming charm wandlessly, he admitted. Worth a try? Draco shrugged to himself. How do we go about tandem casting, then? Well, she started, looking to where she knew his face was. It requires skin-to-skin -skin contact, and it supposedly works best when hands are linked, but as that's not possible in our current state, I think if we touched our foreheads together it might be sufficient. Cheek-to-cheek -cheek would allow more touching surface area, Draco suggested. Yeah, I, uh, didn't think you'd be comfortable with that, Hermione said quietly. Draco shrugged again. You've already had your hand on my dick and balled all over my neck. I think I can handle your face touching mine. Hermione made a humming noise. I just thought it was a little more intimate than you'd be— Are we going to do this or not? Draco interrupted. I'm freezing. Hermione frowned at him in the dark. You're not freezing, you're just cold. Same fucking difference, he said irritably. Can we do this now? Put your cheek to mine, then, Hermione ordered. Draco pushed his face forward in the search for hers and the blackness and their noses met— they both stilled for the briefest of moments before Draco ran his nose along the side of her face as a guide to rest his cheek in the right place against hers. "'Now what?' he asked awkwardly. "'Just... just concentrate and try to project the same energy you'd normally send through your wand for the spell through where we're touching instead,' she instructed. "'And it will probably be easier if we speak the incantation out loud in unison.' "'All right,' Draco sighed. Simple warming charm with standard pronunciation. Yeah, she agreed. We give it to go on three. Draco nodded his head slightly, and Hermione did the quick countdown. 
Facietis color, each heard the other whisper near their ear after three. A tiny pulse of hot air emitted from between their cheeks and faded almost immediately. It worked, Draco said excitedly. Yeah, but not well enough. We've got to put more into it, Hermione said, trying to press more of her skin to his. Let's just keep saying it and see if it builds, Draco suggested. Hermione nodded against him in agreement, and they both took a deep breath. Facetious color, they both said again, slightly louder than before. Another wave of heat spread over their faces, and encouraged by the small success, they kept at it. Their voices rose with each repetition of the incantation, and they were soon chanting steadily in time, eyes closed, faces pressed together, as a blanket of warmth surrounded them. When the temperature reached a nearly uncomfortable level, they trailed off together and let their heads sag against each other. "'Holy shit,' Draco panted. "'We did it.' "'Yeah,' Hermione breathed back. "'Who would have thought?' Draco let his head fall down to rest on her shoulder. "'Uh, no. I feel like I just sprinted to London and back.' "'We use too much energy,' Hermione replied, dropping her own head down exhaustedly. "'This heat will have to last.' Adele will be strong enough to repeat that more than once a day, especially with having to keep our legs moving, and without sustenance. You know, Draco said, blowing blindly at several strands of Hermione's hair that were tickling his nose, if it weren't for the throbbing pain and thirst and hunger and bats and looming threat of death, this might just be cozy. Hermione chuckled tiredly. Yes, Malfoy, that's about it in a nutshell. If everything was different, we might be cozy. If everything was different. Draco echoed so quietly she barely heard him. Hermione sighed and shifted her head against him in an attempt to get more comfortable. We should probably try to get some sleep while it's still warm and the bats are gone, she suggested. Do you want the first watch or shall I take it? Draco looked confused. Watch? One of us always has to be awake to rouse the other. We have to wake each other every fifteen minutes to move our legs. "'Remind me why we have to do that again,' he asked, his voice clearly relaying the dread of the prospect of nights with only quarter-hour intervals of sleep. Hermione sighed. "'Because we are suspended vertically. Gravity is pulling our blood into our feet, and our hearts are not strong enough to pull it all up on their own. We have to move our legs to help it pump back into circulation.' "'And if we don't, then—' "'Then we'd eventually pass out and die.' she said matter-of-factly. It's imperative that we do not lose consciousness. How long would we last if we did? he asked. Hermione was quiet a moment. If we weren't magical, she finally replied, we'd probably be dead already. The extra energy afforded us by our magical cause is the only thing giving us enough strength to keep moving our legs as often as we are in this position. So, I don't really know how long exactly. Fifteen minutes is probably pushing it, but we must sleep to recharge our cores. Otherwise we die anyway. Draco raised his head back up. For once, Granger, I'm glad that you're a know-it-all, he said. Hermione made another sad, tired chuckle, but merely said, So, are you taking first watch, then? He glanced down to where he knew her face was in the dark. Yeah, he said. Get some sleep. 